Welcome to the final installment of our two-part show about the inspirational Mr. Monk Coleman, who transformed his life from living a dysfunctional, reckless lifestyle to a compassionate, cruelty-free, spiritual vegan lifestyle through meditation. Well into his 30s, his life was filled with hardships and destructive habits, like drinking, taking intoxicant substances, violence, and such. Monk believes there is a purpose for everything, including his dark experiences. Let's hear about his self-realization from his soul-searching through meditation. So all the things I look back now, it's not about for me or being a victim. It's like, wow, I needed every bit of this so I could live my purpose and share this with the world. My purpose here is to bring this message to you while pointing you in the direction of unconditional love, which brings transformation so that you will realize your full, unlimited potential. This is truly an inspiring goal and altruistic endeavor by Joe the Vegan Monk Coleman. So how would Monk encourage our viewers to change if some are still undecided about the consumption of alcohol, tobacco and other substances? And how would he inspire them to try to find answers from within? Through meditation? First of all, we gotta be honest with ourselves. We gotta ask ourselves why. Even if we're casual drinkers, why? Right? There's always a reason why you're doing it. Maybe you're insecure and you can't talk to people unless you have a drink. Well, why are you insecure? Where's that coming from? Right? Anything we do destructive to ourselves, there's a reason why we're doing it. Each individual has a different path to getting to that point where they don't need the alcohol, they don't need the drugs, they don't need the cigarettes, they don't need all the distractions that they have to not feel what they're feeling. We have to start feeling these things. We can't avoid it. It just gets louder and louder and louder. And I tell people about meditation all the time. They say, oh, my mind is too busy. No, it's not. You're sitting down where you got to face your fears. You got to face those demons. You got to face the crazy loud. I heard an example of meditation is like a, you scoop up a thing of pond water and you know pond water has air, all the algae and all the stuff in it. That's your mind. And you set that cup down and come back 15 minutes later and now you have some clarity. So the more you sit, the more things become calm. But you have to deal with the loud, irrational, crazy voices, and you have to understand that those are not actually you. Monk believes that the integration of meditation into one's daily life is the most effective way to achieve freedom from the noisy influences of the world around us. One night after a night of partying, I said that was my last drink. The very next day, I sat down and started meditating. But I didn't know it was going to completely transform my entire life. But if you can sit back and detach and just be the watcher, they can come and go just like a cloud that passes by. It's only the energy that you give something that creates a reality. So there's nothing to be afraid of. I implement meditation into my training because I believe that that's your foundation. The physical is important too, but if you get your mind right, if you get your spirit right, if you get your energy right, the decisions you make is gonna reflect that. If you have a mindfulness practice, if you can implement that into your life, then anything you wanna do is gonna be strong and you're gonna be able to follow through. My name is Monk. I'm a meditation instructor, personal trainer, professional bodybuilder, and a professional spreader of love. Monk brings his enthusiasm and wisdom to outreach at health and wellness venues, schools and rehabilitation centers, to name a few. He's also writing a book, Love Over Fear, 10 Steps to a Purposeful Life, soon to be published. He is on the mission of guiding and uplifting others with the messages of compassion and love, as well as motivating others to their brighter and better selves, both physically and spiritually. As a father, Monk's approach to teaching his children is to act as an example, allowing them to be themselves rather than enforcing his ideas into their minds. He has a strong relationship with his youngest child and chanting Jana Coleman, who was named PETA's cutest vegan kid for 2019 and is also a member of the USA national gymnastics team. She's my angel. I have other kids and I love them all. I love them all equally. I love 
everybody equally. She taught me a lot about raising kids. It's like the kids already know. You don't need to do much. Let them be them, right? Let them have imaginary friends if they want them. Now the people are saying, those aren't imaginary friends. How did Eshiana become a vegan at such a young age? I came to veganism a little bit different. Mine came from a connection. It came from love. So with that, I didn't want to go into my household and be like, you got to be vegan. And my daughter used to always come up and go, why do you not eat meat? She was like six, maybe five. My daughter always asked me why I meditate and, and uh, why I'm a vegan. And I tell her, you know, I'm a vegan because I don't want to do any harm to any other beings that feel like we feel. And as far as meditation, I like to connect to God, spirit, or whatever you want to call it. I co-parent with her mother, and she started sneaking meat off of her food, and she got caught doing it. Because I got a text from her mother saying, why is Ishiana taking the meat off her food? She was just taking it off and throwing it away. She wasn't eating it. So her mom said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and run with this thing. But this is four years ago. What happened was her mom did some research on her own. Her mom is now vegan. Looking back, when Ishiana started to get a little older, it all clicked that she was here to wake me up. She was here because she needed me. A child can make you look at something different. And maybe the energy of that child or something that I felt was like, you need to be here. With awe in his voice, Monk tells us more about 12-year-old Eshiana, an accomplished plant-based gymnast who has won championships as part of a team with Jaylene Ivey. So I always tell her she's an amazing little human on every single level. And she teaches me daily about life um, that she came to save me. And in return, I would guide her. And uh, it's much easier being a parent when you're not trying to change that child into something they're not. He believes that some form of celestial knowledge and experience is bestowed on children when they arrive here, or even before. See, with imaginary friends, now the people are saying, those aren't imaginary friends. When, when kids come in, they're having experiences, real experiences, that we don't know about. And it might sound crazy, but they're more, so more tapped in just coming back into this reality that they're having access to stuff that we don't have access to. Right? So let them be them. If we stop being so smart and listen to our children, we would learn a lot. Monk shares Tashiana's accomplishments, both as a student and as an athlete, with loving enthusiasm and pride. So this is a story about her gymnastics. She's on the USA Gymnastics national team. Only two years ago, her mother put her into a tumbling class and she couldn't even do a cartwheel. She practices about 18, 15 to 18 hours a week and still maintains a 4.3 and she meditates and she's a vegan. So she's really here and, and a lot of other kids too her age are coming here to really change the planet. And I always say, all of us are here to change the planet. All of us. Your body, temple here on this planet is changing the world, whether you think it is or not, collectively. During a conference in Hamburg, Germany in 2008, beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai revealed that special children are born from higher dimensions. It happens sometimes that the children become vegan because they are smart. It happens sometimes that the children are born from the higher dimension into a world that is already prepared to receive them because we have somehow prepared the planet for the good people. We have cleaned it with our meditation energy. We have uh, purified it somehow with our uh, virtues and righteous actions. And so uh, many more of the uh, higher level of beings would like to be here with us. So now and again, you hear this 
news about uh, vegan children or even uh, crystal children, indigo children. They have talents in their world. Little kids even, you know, very young age, like, they already show their talent and remarkable virtues. These are children from different dimensions. Monk Coleman has remarkably transformed his life from darkness to the journey towards enlightenment and has been experiencing the connection to his inner wisdom through meditation. Thank you, Monk, for sharing your generous and loving heart with others to help make this world a better place for humans and animals alike. To learn more about Monk Coleman, please visit monketernal.com. Amazing viewers! It has been splendid to have your company for today's program.